Hello and welcome back. Today's the day of reckoning. We're getting geared up to do a hydraulic test of this lump of rivet is still also known as Little Lauren. We're going to be lighting a fire under her, getting her warm, getting her primed with water and ready for a full pressure test. Did all the carrot bolts seal? Did the gasket seal up? Better light the fire and find out. So what we've done already is we've winched the engine out of the shed. We've got that pulled out. We used our um, Amazon special winch for that again. She's uh, she's playing a blinder recently. So we've got the engine out. Um, we've got that fire started. So that's going to get get going now. We'll get some wood dried out. Get that um, get that up and under the fire box. I'm still waiting for the for the water to fill up. We're um, we're just filling her up with water. We're going to top the boiler right up to the top here. So we're gonna get this filled right up to the brim until she starts overflowing. Um, get our fire underneath the fire box. So we're boring through the whole boiler before we end up doing our pressure test with the, the hydraulic pump. That's the idea. So let's, um, let's get this chimney cap off. Not here, do a lot, we ain't got a smoke box on. But we don't need that in the shed anyway. Right, so the plan. So what we're doing is what they call a hydraulic test. These boilers, um, every 10 years, need a, a hydraulic test. It's where you fill the, the boiler completely to the brim with water, and then you pressurize it to one and a half times its normal working pressure. Well, seeing as we've had all these parts off of this engine, we need to check all the seals. We need to check the rivets, um, we need to check the carrot bolts, we need to check all the gaskets we put in, and we need to make sure that that's all, all going to be sealed up. So at the minute, I've got the hose in the top, the hose is filling the engine, and we're going to get it full right of water. I've got the fire going, just get that hot and burning down, and as soon as the water's topped up to the brim, we we'll get that under the, under the firebox here, under the engine, and we'll gently warm the water up, which should in turn warm all the steel, expand the steel, um, and it will be as it would be uh, when we're running it. So we're not gonna be stressing the boiler. We're not gonna be doing any of that. So it should be um, a bit more uh, friendly on it, should we say. The reason we fill the, the boiler with, with water to the brim, is uh, it's a safety thing for those that are new to steam engines. Um, water won't expand if we did have a crack or a split or a burst rivet. Uh, the water won't expand when it comes out, whereas if it was full of steam, um, it can get quite nasty and, and be a devastating, um, yeah, devastating, really. So it can get quite nasty and it could be a end of the life opportunity, really. So um, that's why we do it with the, with the water. So if anything bursts, it just let the pressure out um, and we're perfectly safe. Whereas steam, it expands huge amounts of power and um, we'll, we'll blow the engine a bit, really. So. I'm just waiting for the boiler to fill up. I've got inside, I've got me, um, I've got me new test pump. We're gonna be filling out with water and that's just gonna be hand operated just to bring it up to the, the full working pressure. So we're gonna be relying on the gauge um, on the pump. And uh, fingers crossed, we've got everything buttoned up and nothing's gonna leak. So let's just uh, let's hurry up and wait for the water. Just quickly before we do that, I am 
anticipating some leaky tubes. So the tubes that's in this engine have been in there now for 20 odd years, I think. Well, I've, I've never done them. I've never seen them done on this engine. So God knows how long we've been in there, but I would say 15, 20 years. So they are likely to be our weak point, but we're, uh, we get going and we're, we find out. So the water should now be over the top of the firebox, which should mean that it's safe to put the, put the fire in. We're not at risk of uh, damaging the plug. And we can slowly get our water warmed up. It's a nice day for a fire today. It's cold, but it's not wet. It's quite enjoyable. It smells lovely. While she's heating up, I'm just going around and checking to make sure there's no leaks on any of the patches that we've done, none of the mud old doors or the hand holes. You can see a drip then. Yeah, this one, see? So this one's just wisping a little bit. Well, not wisp. So this one's just dripping at a tiny bit in that corner, so I'll give him a snug up. Gonna nip that one door up. Grand old, whatever you want to call them. It's gonna be an exciting day today. This is either gonna end months of work or start many more. <laughs> Hopefully, we ain't got no leaks. I mean, a leak like this coming from the, the door, it, it, it's not too much of a problem. It's because it's, um, obviously these come out all the time, so they'll be leaking every time you put them back in. It's more the, the gaskets in the, in the carrot bolts we're, uh, we're worried about today. Although that's being said, if any of this, any of these other rivets leak or the tubes leak, we'll have to be replacing them um, down the line anyway. So. She was a good boiler before. Let's hope, <laughs> let's hope I ain't cocked it up. Front, the plug looks dry. Top handhold, which normally gives us problems. It's looking dry. This tap's looking all right at the minute. That blanket plate's never been a problem. And we've got the other. Man, on this side, that looks all right. This end, we got the gauge glass blocked off. That seems dry at the minute. We've also got the pressure gauge and the injector feed. That's all looking all right at the minute.
Ah, well. Oh dear, seems we've failed. <laughs> we haven't got any pressure in there yet, and it looks to me like one of them tubes at the top is already leaking. So, um, I'm going to carry on for a minute, but it does look like we're going to have to be putting some new tubes in this. So, yeah, not not the result I wanted today, really. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, since we got our lit up, I might as well um, carry on um, and make it leak more. <laughs> so this this does mean that I'm not going to be able to test my sud. So we're um, pretty much a, a wasted wasted job now. Um, I might just keep building up the pressure, get it filled up, and then uh, give it a couple of pumps and see where it's where it's leaking real bad from, but I think that's going to put an end to our test today. So there we go, an epic fail. There's the puddle of failure down there. Um, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock the fire out, pull that out of the way. Um, we're going to get it back in the shed. What we're going to do is we're going to order up some new tubes and she's having some new tubes. So, um, yeah, now we get to learn how to retube a boiler. <laughs> so, uh, not the result I wanted today, really. I, um, I had my mind set on testing the other bits, but that'll have to wait. We've got to go back a few steps before we can go on, which seems to be the way with this restoration. But, um, yeah, like I say, we get to learn how to do, uh, do tube expanding and fit some tubes. So. That'd be interesting. So I'm going to cut it off here. I'm going to get this all tidied up, get the water back out the engine, dry it out with the fire, um, and then get it back in the shed. And we'll uh, carry on working on it, I suppose. So Right, we better get our drain down then and get our tucked away. We'll get the water out of it, put the fire back in, dry it out and get it back in the shed. So that's it, I'm going to cut the video off here. We're going to get this back in the shed, get it dried out and get to removing the tube. I'll be on another one, so I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers! <laughs>